Hi everyone, my name is Emma, I am a third year medical student and I just got my schedule for the next block. So if you've been here before, um, you may recognize this video where I talk about my Google Calendar, how much I love it, how I set it up, and why I live and die for my Google Calendar. So I thought it might be a bit fun to walk all of you through me planning a week. Um, so I have built in some new strategies like time blocking and Todoist has an amazing new feature where it syncs with Google Calendar and I don't know how I missed it. but. I'm so excited. Um, so I thought I would pull up my screen here and sort of time block out the next week, which is my orientation for my second semester of third year. And sort of talk about some of my productivity or like time management strategies and I'll show you how the new Todoist syncing works. So let's go. Okay. So I've got this next week up here for everybody to see and if you want to know how I actually set up my Google Calendar, how I choose the calendars and everything like that, I will direct you to the Google video from previous because um, I walk through it really in depth there. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and sort of speed run um, mocking everything here. So we have this all set out now, um, and as you can see, I have one day here which is just the hospital orientation, and then we've got a couple days on campus, um, and some of these have pre-work to do, which I did make a list of as well, um, so we can get to those, and that is where Todoist comes in. And this may seem kind of silly, but I really do enjoy Todoist, but I used to find it, and you can check out this video, um, sometimes I found I had phases where it was a bit cumbersome to use Google Calendar and Todoist and sort of have those reminders, and I've recently set up my phone, which I can show in another video, with a um, Google Calendar sort of widget, um, and then as well a Todoist widget, but the Todoist widget is on a different screen and it it doesn't work as a widget as much because it's hard to prioritize if you only have the free version of Todoist with tags and such in the widget. Um, but now I can make things on Google Calendar show up on my Todoist and vice versa and it is just fantastic. I just used a simple link um, from the app developers, I'll put it in the description, to actually connect the two and I realized that the Google Calendar that you have doesn't have to be on the same email that you've logged into Todoist with, which is really nice because one is my personal email, the other is my uni calendar. Um, so that's a bonus. And then it once you have it all set up, it is as simple as we see here. I put I've linked my Todoist to my task calendar. So if I show here that I've put a demo for YouTube sort of to do at 2.45 on the 13th. And then if I open my Todoist, go to the 13th. Wow. Honestly, this is so cool to me. And vice versa, I can put something in as well. So since it's a Tuesday, I do have my repeating reminder to post a picture of Tuesday on my Instagram. Um, but we will put Again, Todoist is great because you can just write the time that you want something um, and it will figure it out for you if you actually type properly. So at 8 p.m. we want another demo for t YouTube, right? Close that. I have to refresh. Bam! 
and you set how long you want your typical tasks to take. So I did it so that every task coming from Todoist is automatically just a half hour because most of the time if it's just a little like list I'm making, it should be okay. And then anything larger that I'm sort of time blocking or I know is a meeting that I want to be reminded about or have prep work for, I do that on Google Calendar and I make it the amount of time that I want. But I'm just going to quickly delete these demos. So that is just great. I think it is such a useful tool and it helps the two apps work together so seamlessly. Um, you can obviously have it linked to any calendar. I would suggest having a separate calendar away from your um, schedule. So I have my classes calendar here and all of these other ones and I have Todoist linking with my already created task calendar. Um, but that's up to you and they do walk you through that really well in the setup process. So this is what the week is looking like next week, which is pretty busy. Um, and there's a couple ways that I like to record tasks that I have to do when it's for school. So I guess I'll just demonstrate sort of both of these. So for these two, um, I know that I will have to have reading done for both of these. So what I can do is I can go into Todoist. So on the 13th, what I can do is post um, the readings that I have to do as a to-do list for that item. But if you just put it so it appears in your inbox, you will always be reminded that it has to be done. And I use sort of the date as a reminder of when it has to be done by, if that makes sense. So I've got these readings. There's three of them. And they are due... 9 a.m. and then we've got the child readings. There's three as well, um, and they are due at 12 at noon. But obviously, um, nope. um, I'd be hoping to get these done sooner. go back to Google. It has them listed here. This will make your calendar look a bit busy, so that's kind of up to you if that's something that stresses you out or not. Not every task that you put in to do this has to go into your Google Calendar, and you can choose that when you're syncing it up with the link down below. But I have these listed here, so I remember that I have to do them, and they're kind of this like muted gray, so they don't stress me out too much. And when I'm in my to do list, if I'm just in my inbox, it reminds me that these things are happening. Oh, I did that today. Um, so I know that these are due at these times, so there's something that I can just remember to have to do. Now, the other option is actually choosing to strategically plan my time. And this is something um, that I've started working more into my schedule sort of towards the latter part of last um, semester, and that is time blocking. So actually looking at your calendar and deciding, okay, from this time to this time will be my time to film a video, or this time to this time will be my homework time or assignment time, and then you can later, closer to or day of, decide how you're actually going to spend those two hours exactly. Um, so it works really nicely when you have a lot of tasks on the go, um, or you have quite a fluid schedule like med students do where we could be in clinic one day, like a Monday one week and a Tuesday the next and things don't often follow a pattern. Um, so I find that's really useful. So how I do that in my Google Calendar is I will um, block them out as tasks. You could also create a separate sort of calendar for this if you wanted. I might color them in ways that make sense. Um, so I use most of my time blocking, I leave in this blue sort of life color, um, but if it's for YouTube, I'll put it in my YouTube calendar just because it's there. Um, or if it's like a gym and things like that. So the other thing that has pre-reading for it is this ethics thing. We have four cases to get through. I haven't looked at them, so I'm not sure how long it will take, but I might allocate just a couple hours to work on them. So what I would do is, so on this day, 
to probably take me about an hour to get home and like kind of get back and decompress, chatting with friends because we haven't seen each other in two weeks. Um, so I may say from three until five that day, I am going to do the, what is it, the ethics creating for cases. And I could link here or add the attachment that I need to read as well. Um, you can really put so much in your Google Calendar, it can be excellent. Um, and I can either leave this in my normal calendar or I can put it into my tasks calendar. If it's in my tasks calendar, it will show up on my to-do list, which I also think is okay. So that's sort of the two ways you either start in Todoist and it just becomes like a tick box thing, or you start in Google Calendar, block it out, and then um, go from there. And I could, if I wanted to get really nitty gritty, is I could put in a different task for each. So case one, case two, case three, case four. That feels like I'm just trying to rank up, <laughs> like write to-do list as your first item on the to-do list so you can cross it off, feel kind of like that. So I'm not going to do that, but if you did time block out, say I spent Friday and I wanted to time block out a big block from eight to 12 as review, um, and just leave that in a nice muted color, um, then I could put different tasks, like the first hour I want to do Anki, and that's a separate task to the next hour I want to prep um, reading next week. Things like that. And anything that I put in that task is going to show up in Todoist. So those are sort of the two ways that I might time block um, something out. And usually when I know a little bit more about what's going on during my week, I will try to time block out the whole week um, on Sunday, roughly, and then sort of Part of my routine at the end of every day is to go through the next day, um, go through what I needed to get done today, if I got it done, and then go to the next day and see what needs to be moved or if that plan can kind of still continue. And the last little bit is for anybody who already had Todoist and is now just syncing it to Google, you may have noticed that if you have daily reminders, they all got cluttered up at the top here. Um, so I have three four, four daily reminders telling me to read, journal, film something each day, and to do my Anki cards, which I haven't been doing over my break. And these originally were just set to repeat every single day, um, but then when I was on Google Calendar, they all crowded up near the top, and when I opened them on my widget, it just showed me my daily tasks. And those are tasks that I don't always get done until the end of the day. In fact, journaling, I don't want to do in the morning, I want to do at the end of the day. So just a quick tidbit is you can set all of them to repeat every day at midnight or just before midnight, so then they crowd around at the bottom of your day. Things, I used to have this move, so some sort of fitness for me, so whether that's running, weights, um, or like a walk, like just trying to get in the habit of good moving every other day, I have set as a repeat every other day so when you tick it it will shift to two days from then. I let that one stay as just a standard repeat instead of giving it a specific time because it actually is nice when I see it at the beginning of the day it reminds me that it, you've got to think about fitting this somewhere in your day or it kind of gives you warning like oh yeah if I don't do this now, I'm gonna have to do it after class or after placement because I've committed to myself to do it. So those are kind of the two different tricks if you do have your sort of daily reminders and you don't want them crowding up uh, your Google Calendar. But yeah, that's everything for me. Just a short little update on how I'm using Google Calendar and Todoist together. I think that people really like watching me sort of sort these out and plan these things. So if you want to see me do more digital planning and um, when I actually have a week of placement or something, I think that'd be kind of fun to film. Comment below and let me know. If you have any questions about Google Calendar, Todoist, or just in general time management strategies, let me know. Give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye!